So if one synchronized swimmer drowns, does that mean the rest of them have to drown too? Following the rules, I guess. Hello, I'm Robert. Welcome to my home studio. Uh, it is currently election day here in the U.S. as I record this, so I thought we would talk about the election. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going to talk about the election. <laughs> uh, however, I recently did a video on how to, how to restring and set up a Floyd Rose guitar, and much to my surprise, uh, that actually prompted a lot of you to ask me to do more how-to videos. Well, you are in luck, because today... I'm going to show you how to traditionally organize your pedals on a pedal board. Uh, and for said demonstration, I'm going to also kill two birds with one stone here because we're also going to demonstrate the new pedal board uh, from uh, this company. What's this company called? Uh, Guido. A brand I'm not familiar with, but the pedal boards look cool. They asked me if I would do a video on this. So, uh, like I said, we're going to kill two birds with one stone here. Let's see. What all's in this box? Oh, sweet. It's got a case with it. Oops. Another box. Alrighty, so we got a manual. This is the GPB series pedal boards. Uh, is what that there be? And we have the board itself. This is obviously a small, uh, smaller size board, uh, kind of somewhere along with like the pedal train mini or the. Uh, I can't remember what they're calling their smaller size board, like the Metro or something. On the surface, it looks like one of those. However. Uh, it also comes with a couple of tools, including an Allen wrench and a place to store the Allen wrench. And then these little guys here on the back are, will pop up and prop it up for us. So, uh, also here in the box, and last but not least, we have, uh, you know, this bag right here is the mounting system. What does set this pedal board apart from the pedal trains is actually comes with its own uh, mounting system. Uh, I haven't dug too far into this thing yet to you know to be 100% sure, but from what I could tell, uh, it's kind of similar, or at least along the lines of the uh, Temple Audio mounting system, uh, the system that they use for their to mount pedals onto their boards. So this being a small pedal board, I'm gonna put this thing together real quick and uh, go choose some pedals, and uh, we are going to see if we can build a board with this thing. Stay put. Okay, so here is the Guido GPB-01 pedal board. This, again, this is the small size. I'm gonna try to be using mostly miniature size pedals. I'm going to build a small pedal board out of this thing. Um, you see, I already got it started here, and you know, this is the smallest wall pedal that I've got. And you know, there's gonna be some pedal types here that uh, that I'm not representing, but I'm gonna try to get as many on here as I can. So, uh, the wah pedal, this is the, uh, the Morley, the Steve Vai Bad Horsey 2020 edition that, uh, just came out here the last year or so. And you see what's cool about this particular pedal board is it comes with these little, uh, thingamajabby bumper things. Uh, you know, and you screw them down onto the board right up against the pedal. And the inside, the part that goes up against the pedal is actually a, like a rubber felt version. You know, it's a material that the pedal is not going to be able to slide up against, you know, back and forth. So once you get that thing locked down nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. Pretty cool, right? Uh, you know, no, no 
sticky Velcro or anything on the back of the pedal, pedal or, uh, you know, cable ties or anything like that. It's, uh, as I can tell so far, this is actually a pretty good system. So, here's what we got. We got the wall pedal, which I already, which I already got started. Uh, we are going to use, uh, we're going to build this thing using a TC Electronic Polytune. Uh, this is the original, uh, the first generation of the Polytune tuner pedal. I wish I had a mini, mini version of this one, but I don't, so that's going to have to work. Uh, the TC Electronic Spark Mini Booster, also. And for an overdrive, we are going to go with the Ibanez TS Mini Tube Screamer. For a distortion, this is my favorite, uh, one of my favorite Marshall in a box distortion pedals. This is the Outlaw FX uh, Deputy Marshall. Very, very good pedal. I like that one a lot. Um, <clears throat> and this guy here, this is a Source Audio Programmable EQ. So we're going to add an EQ pedal in here just for kicks. Uh, there's also a Joyo Voodoo Octave Fuzz pedal. Uh, also from Outlaw FX, this is their Vigilante Chorus, uh, one of my favorite chorus pedals. The MXR Phase 95, the Joyo uh, Time Magic Delay Pedal from their Iron Man series. And because I don't have a miniature reverb, I'm just going to use the Atmosphere reverb that I demoed here on my channel a couple months ago because I think it's a, actually really, really cool. So uh, here's what we're going to do. Let's, we got the wall pedal on there already. Ideally, you would like to put the tuner pedal you know, at the front of your chain or somewhere as close to the front as you can. Now, because, wall, you know, if you got a wall pedal, you know, to think about, that's obviously a little bit bigger, and you got to kind of also consider, you know, logistics, if you will, and how you're going to fit everything on here. So in this case, uh, you know, I'm going to actually put the tuner pedal second. Most pedals are going to fall into four different categories. So you're going to have, uh, you know, your, what I call frequency pedals, which are, you know, kind of really a, a different take on uh, gain pedals, which are your overdrives and distortions and fuzzes and stuff. Uh, so you got frequency, gain pedals, then you got modulation, which is, uh, you know, that's your phasers, your flangers and choruses and stuff like that. Uh, and then your time-based pedals, you know, that your delays and reverbs. So we got our first frequency pedal on there. We're going to put the tuner pedal in here as close to the beginning of the chain as we can get it. Now, the GPB-01 pedal board comes with this little handy little uh, hex wrench tool. Uh, you know, it's just an, Allen, just an Allen wrench, but it's got a handle on it to make your life much, much easier. So we're going to take a couple of these, and it comes with a bag of these funny little wing nuts that you see right there, as well as the hex head screws that you use to go with them. So... The way these work, you just drop the screw down into the hole of the little bumper jobby. And then we just start the little wing nut there onto the bottom. And now it's ready to go. And then you just line it up so that the wing nut falls down into the groove right there. And then you just push the pedal right up against it. while you tighten it down. Nice and snug. Okay, get the other one started. Drop it down in there, do the same thing. Nice and snug. Pedal ain't going anywhere. Pretty cool, man. Pretty good system. Come on, camera. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to strap every, I'm not going to secure every single one of these down because 
I think you guys get the idea. Uh, next, we are going to implement our gain pedals. And uh, again, that is boosts, overdrives, distortions, fuzz pedals, EQs, that kind of stuff. So now what I have always done, and you know, this is something that I encourage you to experiment with before you decide that this is the be all end all, because it could very well be different for you. Um, but what we are going, you know, I always like to arrange my gain pedals in ascending order, meaning that the farther along the chain you go, uh, the pedals, the higher, you know, you get the, the higher gain the pedals get. So, you know, the boost pedal I always put first. And we follow that up with the overdrive. Uh, and then we follow that up with the distortion pedal. So, wah into, you know, and this is the way that I encourage you to think about it. Think about the direction that the signal is going and how it is going to affect the tone. So you have the wah into the tuner, and then especially in this section here, you know, and this is kind of what I want to drive home to you, know, to think about how you're actually routing the signal. Uh, the signal, you know, is, you know, of course you got your frequency and your tuner here, and then, you know, this would, you would be boosting the overdrive or the distortion, or you would be overdriving the distortion as opposed to distorting the overdrive. And then next we would put our fuzz pedal on here. Fuzz pedal on my pedal board? Hi, you right. Next, let's add our EQ pedal. This is the, again, Source Audio Programmable EQ. This thing's really, really cool. Uh, I did a video on this, I don't know, a couple years ago now, I guess. But uh, this pedal's pretty cool. This pedal's really cool, actually. It's since been discontinued, and uh, Source Audio have replaced it with uh, what is now known, what is called the EQ2. Uh, I haven't gotten to try that one yet, but it looks every bit as cool as this one. Probably better. I like to put my EQ pedal at the end of all of my gain pedals, and the reason why is because you know if this is the basis of my tone, uh, I want to EQ it last. You know, instead of EQing it before it goes into the drives and distortions and stuff. So, so, and then from here, assuming that I am running this into an amp with an effects loop, I would go out from here into the amp into the front end of the amplifier. So, with all this extra space up here, again, assuming that I have an amp with an effects loop, this is the way I set that stuff up. First, I start with a phaser. And phaser, this is kind of a tweener pedal. And what I mean by that is phasers can seem to work real well either in the effects loop or going into the front, in which case I would put it right there. You know, I happen to like going into the effects loop a little bit better because, you know, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit, the effect itself anyway is a little bit cleaner sounding, gives me a little bit more headroom. Uh, just, honestly, it's just easier to hear that way. So, so I like to put mine in the effects loop, so that's where it's going to go. If I had a flanger, I don't have a flanger here, but if I did have a flanger, that's what I would put next. Uh, and then we follow it up with modulation, which... Followed my channel for any length of time at all. Chorus is one of my very favorite mo types of modulation. That is what the Vigilante, that's where the Vigilante Chorus is going to go. So, and then after that is where I would place the rest of my modulation. You know, and then, you know, we're talking vibratos, you know, stuff like that. So, it's really Chorus is just really, really, you know, vibrato is really just really, really intense Chorus. <laughs> so, then we we put our time-based effects, uh, which would be delay. And reverb. Uh, again, the traditional way to do this, and again, you know, you want to add, you know, this is adding echo to the delay signal instead of uh, delaying the reverb. So, you know, that's the reason why most people set those up in, uh, in that order. And then, of course, if, you know, a tremolo effect is another popular time-based effect, and uh, most people will put that before the delay. So your time-based effects typically will go tremolo, delay, reverb. Traditionally, again, these are not set in stone rules or laws or anything. Experiment, you know, with your uh, you know with your pedals. Try them in different orders and see what you like best before 
you decide exactly how you want to order them. But traditionally, this is what you would do. You know, also, if you are, if you have a pedal board similar to this, and uh, you are running them into an amp that does not have an effects loop, then really what I do anyway, I don't really change the order of anything that I got here. I leave it just the same way that it is. Uh, I just go from the output of the EQ into the input of the phaser and then out the rest of the, the rest of the way that way. And again, the reverb would be the last pedal in my chain going into the front. So, you know, essentially comp accomplishes the same thing. You know, the idea though, is that you want to keep every, you know, all your modulation and time-based delays and stuff like that after after the gain stages so after your distortions overdrives delays and all that kind of stuff then you put everything else if you have a looper pedal for example there's pe people like to run looper pedals in different different ways um i don't have a looper pedal handy but you know if i did i would actually put that at the beginning very very front and the reason why is because i like my clean unaltered guitar signal going into the looper and then I can alter it with you know all of this other different stuff here as necessary again as it's traveling through the signal um traveling through the chain that rather so but there are also other people that would prefer to start the loop after the distortion and stuff and run it there towards the end so that you can also do that as well boost pedals are kind of are also boost pedals and EQs are also uh, kind of tweener pedals. You can put these in any number of different places. Again, try them in different spots and see what works best for you. If you are boosting, you know, if you're putting the the boost before the gain stages, it's going to act more as a gain boost. If you put it after, it's going to act more as a volume boost. Uh, that's one reason why I like to set these up the way that they are right here. So I have a gain boost before if I need it and a you know, the EQ will also act as a volume boost after. If you want a clean volume boost, you know, that you can EQ, you can also put your EQ pedal or the boost in the effects loop, right? That's actually a really, really good way to get a really good clean boost that you can custom cater, you know, like a clean solo boost, you know, that you can customize a little bit more to your liking. You know, for example, if you not only want to boost uh, boost the dbs for a solo lead but you also want to boost the mids while you're at it you can put an eq pedal in the effects loop it's great for that so that ladies and gentlemen is how i like to set up a pedal board again tweak move stuff around try some different things see what works best for you but you know in the it, it traditionally this is how you know how the experts, whoever the that, whoever the experts may be, <laughs> uh, tell you you should do it. If you want to do it in a traditional manner, there is a method to the madness as to why. So, experiment, have fun. Let me know if this works for you or if it doesn't work for you. Okay, so there you have it. There is uh, you know you know that is the traditional way and typically the way that I uh, arrange pedals on my own pedal board. Uh, I actually really really like the Guido GPB pedal boards. These are pretty sharp. Uh, this particular one, I think, runs about 99 bucks, And uh, there's actually three sizes. This being the smallest, there's a medium size, and then there's a, you know, there's a big monster, uh, a big monster board for, you know, that'll probably hold, I'm guesstimating, probably in the neighborhood of, you know, 15 pedals or so. Now, for me personally, the older I get, the less gear I like lugging around. And uh, so this size is probably still a little bit too small for uh, for my purposes. I would probably go with the medium board. Uh, and the difference in price, I think, is only like 20 bucks or something like that. It's not very, you know, it's not much more. Uh, I'll post links to uh, the Guido pedal boards down in the description so that you can check them out. Uh, they're very affordable, and uh, you know th these things are really well made, by the way. I mean, this thing's solid. Uh, really, really solid. No loose parts or anything moving around on it that I can see. You know, if you're looking for a good, reliable pedal board and, uh, you know, don't want to spend too, too much money, this is probably a pretty good investment, you know, and it even comes with its own, uh, you know, with its own fitted gig bag for it, too. So, you know, I wasn't expecting that. You know, that's, that's a pretty good value. So, yeah, man, Guido pedal boards and uh, traditional way to set one up. So I'll post, uh, I'll, again, I'll post uh, links to the pedal boards and any other pertinent links about anything discussed in this video down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.